Have you ever wondered if there were a completely natural or historically inspired way to care for your skin and apply your makeup? For years, I wondered the exact same thing. In fact, I have now spent years perfecting my current skincare routine and natural makeup routine. And today I'm going to be bringing you all along for a morning of getting ready with me, applying my all natural skin products and makeup products and explaining to you all what I do. Several years ago, I made the jump to completely break up with commercial mainstream beauty products due to an extreme lack of confidence in the safety of their ingredients and their safety for my own bodily health, especially with prolonged use. After all, our skin is our biggest organ and it is very absorbent. Everything we apply to our skin does end up inside of our body, which is why it's very important to me to make informed, discerning choices about the products I use on a regular basis. Are you looking for a simpler, safer, more natural way to care for your skin and apply makeup with minimal products and time? Are you wondering if there is even a such thing as effective, natural makeup products out there? This video is for you. So in this video, I will be sharing the main reason why I will never use most commercial skincare or makeup products, the simple, natural, and historically inspired routine that I have been perfecting for years to care for my skin, to preserve its moisture and its glowiness and keep it protected from the elements. I'll share the raw, natural, and multi-purpose natural ingredients that I use to care for my skin, which in many cases can also be used in my hair care routine as well. I'll share with you the Asian massage techniques that have actually made a huge difference in my facial appearance, facial health, facial glowiness, everything. I'll be revealing to you all the natural makeup company that I almost exclusively buy all of my makeup products from and why they are truly natural, truly safe, and really Really, really effective products. I'll then be taking you along with me for a morning to show you how I apply these simple basic makeup products to achieve a classic elegant makeup look that is still pretty natural. So let's jump into it. Our skin is our largest organ. Everything we apply to our skin ends up in our bodies. Like wow, just take a moment to take that in. Isn't that a pretty mind-opening concept? Skincare and makeup especially are something that most of us women are applying to our skin or our faces or our bodies pretty much every day, which makes it even more important to be discerning about the ingredients that are in these products and to basically just try to keep things as simple and natural as possible. Story time. I did not always think this way. Pretty much all throughout high school and into early adulthood, I had a massive collection of completely mainstream commercial skincare and makeup products that were laden with chemicals, and I didn't even care to read the ingredients. I didn't even think about the ingredients. So don't feel bad if you're in the same boat and if this is your first time even considering this concept. So around the time of having my first child, that was when I began embarking on more of a natural lifestyle journey and I completely quit using all makeup and I didn't start wearing makeup again for actually several years, probably five years, four or five years, I didn't wear any makeup whatsoever. During that time, I was still attempting to care for my skin in a natural way, but I did go through a long adjustment period of just figuring out how on earth I could keep my skin moisturized by using only natural plant ingredients such as oils, as opposed to the moisturizers that I was used to buying. So nowadays I have since perfected my skincare routine, although I'm always learning new things, and I have obviously begun wearing makeup again. I don't wear makeup on most days, but it's nice to put on makeup for filming a video or for going out. And I've since found one particular makeup company that I completely trust. I read all of their ingredients. Everything I buy, I read all the ingredients, and this company meets my pretty high standards when it comes to ingredients of being completely natural, no synthetic ingredients added, and they're also very effective products. So I'm going to be revealing that to you in a moment. So let's just briefly touch on what my natural standards are for skincare and makeup products. This is basically the same standard that I apply to my hair care products and any body care products that I'm using. My standard is that I will not use anything on my body, my hair, my face, that is not technically edible. So rather than simply looking for 
greenwashed products who make the claim that they are natural because they simply eliminate a few of the highly toxic known ingredients, but then they're still comprised of a synthetic chemical soup of ingredients. This edibility standard that I've created pretty much eliminates the bulk of mainstream products, but it does mean that I can be completely confident in what I'm using because after all, our skin is very absorbent. Whatever we put on our skin is ending up in our bodies. So it makes sense that we would want anything we put on our skin to be edible since it is ending up in our body, much like the food we eat. Anyway, <laughs> I could talk on and on about this. So in this video, I'll be walking you all through a morning skincare routine. So this will not go over my nighttime cleansing of my face or anything like that. That will be a subject for another video, but I will be showing you all my morning routine and how I keep my skin moisturized and protected from the elements, especially right now that it's winter in Canada here. I will then be walking you through how I apply my natural makeup. So my skincare routine is almost completely comprised of raw natural ingredients. So they're not processed, they're not mixed into a recipe. Most of the time, they're just the raw natural ingredients. And in many cases, they're the same ingredients that I could be or am using in my natural hair care routine as well. I really love this because I am a minimalist at heart and I have to be a minimalist because there's a lot of people living in my home here with me and it's not a big home. I have to be very conscious of the amount of products that I have to keep organized and I'd rather keep that to a minimum. So I love products that can be multi-purposed like that. When it comes to my makeup, I am also relatively minimalist. I don't use a lot of makeup products and I do like things that can be multi-purposed as well. So I'm going to reveal to you the makeup company that I choose to buy all my products from in a moment. But first I'd like to talk to you about one of the skincare products that you're going to be seeing me use in a moment in my routine. And it is an amazing handcrafted whipped face and body butter that my best friend Jessica makes herself. So I've been using this cream on and off in my routine ever since I met my friend Jessica several years ago and we became fast friends and she's given me several containers of it throughout the years as gifts because she knows I love it so much. It is really one of my favorite parts of my daily skincare ritual and I can also incorporate this cream into my hair care as well. It's great to apply to my hair ends for moisture. This is just an all around great cream. It's amazing for moisturizing the skin and locking moisture in, protecting your skin from the elements. It can also help treat things like eczema and it is very, very anti-aging, which I think all of us are interested in. <laughs> So I say all this because I have recently been trying to convince my friend Jessica that she should begin selling this oil online. She's thinking about it. So if after watching this video and watching the demo of how I use this cream and being blown away by it, you are interested in buying some of this cream yourself, then please leave a comment below and I will pass those comments on to Jessica and I'm sure that would be very encouraging for her to take the leap and start selling this cream online. Okay, let's talk about the makeup company that I buy all of my products from before we jump into the routine. So I exclusively use makeup products from the company 100% Pure. I absolutely love this makeup company because they are right on par with my high standards. They understand that safe natural products is not just about eliminating a few of the known toxic ingredients, but about actually deriving all of your ingredients straight from nature. So for example, most of their makeup, such as their foundation, their eyeliners, their mascaras are all fruit pigmented. So as opposed to most makeup products, which use various mineral pigments or synthetic pigments. They literally just use pigments from fruit for the most part. And those pigments are always in a completely natural base of ingredients, usually derived from plant oils and other natural substances. Okay, so let's briefly talk about my makeup routine. So I do take some inspiration from history, but in other ways I do choose to depart to create a makeup look that I personally like, that fits my taste, that I think suits my face. So it's kind of a mixture of everything. When it comes to skincare, Although I haven't done a ton of research, I am obviously inadvertently following more of a historical skincare routine simply because they didn't have a commercial beauty industry producing all sorts of chemical concoctions like we have today. So they were mostly relying on natural plant oils or animal fats to care for their skin and hair. 
I also take some inspiration from Asian skin and body care, specifically their massage techniques. These practices are some of the most underrated beauty secrets that I think more people need to know about. So since this video is an overview of my whole routine, there might be certain topics within here that could be material for a future video. So if you're interested in seeing a full video on any of the practices or techniques I'm going to be showing you in this video, be sure to leave a comment below and I will definitely keep that in mind for a future video. That's how this video came to be actually. So if you're interested in buying any of the skincare products or the makeup products that I'm using in this video, they will all be individually linked in the description with the name and then the link for where you can buy it. These links will also be in the pinned comment and on my website, katherinesewing.com. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in trying any of these products. Okay, so let's jump in to showing you my daily skincare and makeup routine. Okay, so here I am in the morning with a completely bare face and I'm just starting off by wrapping a silk scarf headband around my hair. Okay, so the first step is adding moisture to my skin and I love to use rose water, also known as rose hydrosol, to my face. It comes in this lovely glass spray bottle and this is actually a byproduct of making essential oil from rose petals and it has beautifying and anti-aging effects in addition to just applying moisture into my skin. Okay, so the next step is sealing that moisture in and of course I'm using oil for this. One of my favorite oils is red raspberry seed oil and I'm just adding that to my skin. Red raspberry seed oil has natural SPF and it's anti-aging and a nice beautifying oil. It's also very light and moisturizing. Now I'm going in with the amazing skin cream that my friend Jessica makes. This cream is a light whipped mixture of coconut oil, shea butter, grapeseed oil, frankincense essential oil, and clary sage essential oil. A very little goes a long way, and because it contains shea butter, it is amazing for adding a layer of elemental protection to my skin, especially right now that it is winter. All of these ingredients are known for their nourishing, balancing properties for the skin, and are exceptionally anti-aging as well. So now it's time for that Asian skin massage technique that I told you about. So I use and love gua sha tools for my face and they have made a huge difference for me with regular use. Gua sha is a massage technique using smooth edged tools like this. It originates from ancient China. It gently clears away the facial puffiness that so many of us struggle with. It massages and clears your facial lymph nodes, which can otherwise become stagnated with toxins. And this is actually a very understated but essential beauty secret, in my opinion. So you can see it actually starts off with the neck. I started off with the back of my neck and now the front of my neck and I'm working my way up to the face using the different surfaces of these tools to fit into different areas of my body. Gua Sha Facial Massage also helps clean pores, lift skin, and massage away excess fluid in the face while encouraging fluid to go into the places where we generally want more plumpness, like our lips and our cheeks. Finally, I'm going to be finishing up with a few strokes of a face lifting Japanese lymph massage technique known as Zogen Massage. This is not the full massage routine by a long shot, it's just a small portion of it to complement the gua sha that I've already done. I learned the full version of this massage from a wonderful YouTube video which I will link in the description. This massage technique was developed by a Japanese beautician, Yukoko Tanaka. I don't have enough good things to say about it. Zogen Massage really has all of the same benefits as Gua Sha, and I like using both of them in combination or just the massage on its own depending on how I'm feeling and if my tools are handy. So now I'm going in with my 100% pure under eye caffeine cream. So this is made with coffee beans, it's made with all natural ingredients, and it's really great at decreasing any puffiness under my eyes and decreasing any fine lines around the eyes and just generally waking up that area. 
Finally, I'm finishing up with my own homemade mineral sunscreen. So zinc oxide powder was actually used as a skin powder in the Victorian era, and at the time it was considered very high-end. I make my own natural sunscreen by simply mixing zinc oxide powder with any type of cream that I have on hand that is natural. So in this case, I mixed my zinc oxide with this small container of Egyptian Magic Skin Cream, which is an all-natural skin cream made with olive oil, beeswax, honey, and other bee products. Okay, so now I'm going in with this beautiful BB cream from, of course, 100% Pure. I love all of their products for my skin, and I like this because I don't like putting a lot of product on my skin. I don't like wearing foundation or concealer. So this just gives you a little bit of coverage and it helps blur imperfections and bring some brightness and luminosity to the skin while just being a moisturizing cream. So I don't even really view it as makeup, it's more just a natural cream that I like to apply. Now I'm going in with this highlighter, which is also from 100% Pure. And I like to use it around my eyes, the top of my nose, just above my lip my chin and my forehead, basically all of the high points. And just using my ring fingers to blend that in softly. Okay, so now it's time to do brows. For me, eyebrows are really one of the most important parts of my makeup routine. I think it makes the biggest difference to my face and to most people's faces if they have well-defined shapely brows. So I actually, for a couple years, used to use the historical method of using burnt cloves and they work amazingly. I'll probably do a video on that at some point, but this is what I've been using from 100% Pure because it's obviously just more convenient for me, and I really like this product as well. So it's basically this creamy brow filler that also helps to hold the brow hairs in place while filling in your brows, and in my case they just darken up my brows a little bit to match my hair. I'm not sure why, but my brows always sort of appear a bit lighter than my hair. And whenever you're filling in brows, you want to focus more of the product on the outer quadrant of your eyebrow than the inner quadrant, although I do like to fill in the inner bit just a little bit. You can see the difference between those two eyebrows now. And I like to use these upward strokes, so I start along the bottom of the brow because that's where I want most of the product to be concentrated. It just looks more natural and clean that way, and I use these upward strokes to simulate brow hairs. And then afterwards, you always want to finish off by brushing your eyebrows with a spoolie whenever you've filled them in in any way. This just helps it look more natural than it would otherwise. You don't want to look like you have makeup on your eyebrows, even if you do. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going in with this other product from 100% Pure. This is, I believe, called a brow builder. It's essentially like a little mascara wand with brown brow filler on it. It does build up the brows to some degree, so it can fill in sparse areas, and it also, of course, helps the brow hairs stay in place. And there we go. There are my finished eyebrows. And that's just a comparison of the before and the after, so you can see what a difference that makes. Okay, so now I'm going in with this beautiful rose gold eyeshadow palette from 100% Pure. It has been somewhat demolished, unfortunately, by my toddler, but there's still quite enough pigment in there for me to be able to create this look. I also want to point out that I am an extremely minimalist makeup person and I currently only have this one eyeshadow brush, but I am looking to add another brush to my routine specifically for blending because I think I could do better in that regard. So I just started off with the lightest shade all along my eyelid and in the inner corners of my eyes to bring some brightness. And now I'm going in with a nice rosy, slightly darker shade and putting that in my crease. Can see that I like to wing out my crease because I do like a winged eye shape. A good winged eye shape will also begin with your eyeshadow and with your eyelid crease, not just with your eyeliner. And just following up with the other eye, so you can see I take it all the way into my crease, but I bring it out and up at the outer corner of my eyelid crease. 
and a little bit along the outer bottom corner of my eye as well. Okay, now I'm going in with a little bit of the darkest contouring shade from this palette and just putting it in that outer corner of my crease now just for extra definition. This is where I could have used more blending than I was able to do, but it does also look a bit more extreme seen so zoomed in on camera like this than it does in real life. So I've just brushed off the excess product from this fluffy brush and I'm using it to the best of my abilities to blend. But again, I'm definitely going to get a dedicated blending brush soon because I think I could use it. Okay, so now I'm going in with this eyeliner. This is from another natural company called Fit Glow. It's not my first choice. My first choice is, of course, from 100% Pure. But at the time, they didn't have any of my favorite colors in stock. So my favorite color to use for eyeliner and mascara is a dark purple. So that's what color this eyeliner is. So I'm starting off by actually tight lining my upper lash line, which is where you take the eyeliner and put it directly on your waterline. I don't like doing this all the time because I don't love having product that close to my eyes, but when I do do it, it does make a big difference. So now I'm just going in and lining the upper lash line, filling it in a little bit more, especially at the outer half of my eyelid. And now it's time to add a wing. I loved a good winged eyeliner, but nowadays I'm actually not doing a traditional cat eye with the sharp angle upward. I'm actually preferring the line to just go almost straight out, more like an Egyptian winged eyeliner look. I just think that complements my eye shape better. And what I love about this is because the eyeliner is brown and not black, it basically just creates the illusion of a shadow cast by my eyelashes, especially once I have mascara on. Another trick I like to do is something I learned from a Marilyn Monroe makeup expert who said that she, her makeup artist would use brown pencil eyeliner to create the illusion of a shadow under her lower lash line to make it look like her lash line was casting this big shadow. So I also do that. Okay, so it's time to do the next eye. So I've already lined the upper lash line, added my wing, and now I'm just adding that stippling effect along the lower lash line to mimic the shadow cast by my lashes. It's basically like a reverse wing in a sense. Now I'm going in with this slightly darker dark purple creamy eyeliner. This is from the brand Pixi. It's not my first choice again, but I'm working with what I have on hand and I just darkened up the wing, just the wing area of the liner. There we go. That's more or less the finished eyeliner look. And now I'm going to go in with my lash curler. I always think that this looks like a medieval torture device, but it does make a difference to my lashes. I don't like doing this all the time because it's a little hard on lashes, but it does make a difference. And now I'm going in with my lovely fruit pigmented lengthening mascara from 100% Pure. You can see it's this dark purple color. That's my favorite color to use on my eyes. I never like using straight black anything on my eyes. I think it's kind of a deadening color. I prefer it to have a little bit of color in it, even for mascara and eyeliner. So I'm just lining my lashes. You can see I'm using a slight back and forth motion of the mascara wand to prevent clumping and to just add a little more volume. And this is a very buildable mascara, so it's great for adding multiple coats. I like to focus a lot of mascara on the outer lashes because that just complements my eyeliner shape. And there is the finished mascara. So the final step is adding some color to my face. Now in modern makeup, we typically add color with bronzers and contouring, but historical makeup, they mostly just used rouge to add color to their face. So I'm using my lipstick, which has also been demolished by my toddler. And that's why I'm using this lipstick brush to apply it to my lips. 
I'll typically apply a darker, more bright application of this color for videos, whereas in my daily life, I would just kind of lightly stipple it across my lips for more of a lip stain effect. But this is right before filming a video, so I'm going in with a little bit brighter of an application. Just making sure I get into the corners of my lips. My cupid bow has already been done. And then filling in my lower lip more. And there we go. So I also use this exact same lipstick for my cheek color. I really like using straight red on my cheek. I think that it looks actually very natural. And when I first apply it, it might look a little bit overdone, but I find that just with a little time, it really soaks into your face and looks very natural, the same way a natural flush would look. The good thing about adding a bright red color to your cheeks and blending it in this way is it kind of inherently takes away any attention from any other rednesses or imperfections on your skin just by contrast. And here is the finished makeup look. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed this peek into my natural skincare and makeup routine. If you're feeling inspired to try any of these products or techniques or practices, be sure to leave a comment below. Be sure to check out the accompanying article on my skincare and makeup routine, which will be linked in the description. And again, if you are interested in purchasing any of the skincare or makeup products that you saw me using in this video, be sure to check the description for those links where you can purchase them. Most of these links are affiliate links, which means that I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. So I appreciate it and thank you in advance. If you enjoy historical natural hair care and skincare, as well as a historical handmade wardrobe and how I am building that for myself, you're definitely gonna want to subscribe to this channel and hit the notifications bell so you never miss a future video. I also have a YouTube membership that you can sign up for for approximately five USC a month. You will get 24 hours of early ad-free access to all of my videos that I post, as well as access to an exclusive members-only chat group and two exclusive posts from me every month, giving you an inside look at what I'm working on and what's coming next. I really appreciate any of, you, any of you who join this channel because again, it enables me to continue producing content like this for you. If you're interested in hearing about one of the most underrated hair growth secrets, then be sure to check out this video. See you on the next video.